Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. Another day and another episode, and or the same day and another episode. Um, actually, I'm pretty motivated to record now, uh, which is good and great and extremely amazing. And therefore, we're going to go through some Reddit things. Um, let me see if I can show you. There it is. Um, should I actually keep it like this? Does it make sense? Is it too small? I don't know. I can't... I, I couldn't say, to be honest. But I can make it just big enough to make sure that it's fine, I guess. I don't know. Um, let me see. Let's get into the Stoicism subreddit. If it loads, when it loads, whatever. And let's see what we encounter here and what we can see here and feel here and uh, answer here. Let me see. Last night I finally snapped. I have been under a lot of pressure and stress lately and I may have finally run out of fucks to give. <laughs> Finding myself awake at 4am for no reason other than anxiety, I decided to throw the towel about worrying about everything. The problems between my parents are their own, unless they hurt each other, their problems are theirs. They are not children and they do not need me to solve their problems. My mentally challenged brother wants to ruin his life with bad choices and both friends, so be it, he is not my responsibility currently, and I made it clear to my parents that he will never be. I can help him, of course, he's my brother, but I cannot help who doesn't I cannot help who doesn't want to be helped. And there is a bit more to it. Um, I don't think that it is necessary for me to read all of it, but the point is when it is not something that you can change and do something about, why should you be bothered to um, keep it on your mind and keep it in your mind? Like, why? Why should you? You know, why should you? Um, why should you struggle with somebody else's problems? Of course, uh, family, good friends, and so on and so forth. It makes sense, and and it is totally fine. And I would even suggest to. Um, to, to help them and make sure that they are well off and to make sure that they are happy and healthy and whatnot. On the other hand, um, their problem shouldn't be yours. You can help, but it is all you can do. And especially as um, the author of this, this post said, if they do not want to be helped, you can't do anything about it. You know, you, you cannot uh, get anyone to do anything. And uh, this is totally something to keep in mind, and this is totally something to not forget. What single stoic quote have you found repeating in your life that have helped the most? I'll start with mine by Epictetus who said, Don't seek to have events happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do. Which is kind of essentially uh, amor fati. Love faith, love your faith. This quote sincerely feels like a superpower, it is hard to always accept the present, but I sometimes find myself attempting to do it with eagerness. Whether it be a traffic jam, a bad client at work, an unfortunate mishap, whatever the case, when I think to this, to this quote, it makes an otherwise difficult and tumultuous situation a little more bearable. Does this mean I can handle everything with ease, like going blind, being tortured, losing a family member etc? Of course not. But for most of what we can face in life, this quote is incredible. And yes, it, 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 it really is. You know, it kind of gets things into perspective a bit, I would say, I would, I would consider. But um, Welcome back out of reasons I had to restart the stream and now we are doing it fuck we are doing it again let me see it should be there and yes it is so let's actually have a look at what people find or have I read that then 
Well, I don't know. Let's just let's just go ahead. I guess. Let's just do something. Let's just make. Um, how to recover as a victim of gaslighting? Uh, I've been gaslighted a handful of times. Okay. Thanks, I guess. More is happening. Could you please close? Um, I could actually also stay like that. Should be fine. Um, or I am don't. I've been gaslighted a handful of times. The ones who did it to me were close friends and relatives who would have, uh, who would always invalidate my experiences. It is still bothering me to this day, and it manifests in a way where I can trust myself and where I can't trust myself in day to day stuff like I didn't record something amazing that I did or some event that happened with my phone. I would feel angry at myself and it sucks because I know that it happened. But the voice in my head say that it doesn't exist anymore. Mm, I see. I do really see. Um, this is a fucked up position. It really is. Um, and it kind of actually strikes me that it's actually well formulated. Kind of. I don't know. Like It really is clear to me what... The problem is, um, but how to deal with something like that? I mean, uh, how how could you trust anyone again when it's been even relatives that fucked with you, um, and also close friends? To some degree, it's it's always difficult for me to say. Well, yes, it's been their fault because who says that it's not you yourself that thinks that this is the case? You know, of course, thinking in that way, uh, I don't know if it is smart. I don't know if it is good for you, but it, it, I, I tend to, to search for mistakes and search for, for quote unquote bad things in, uh, in the people themselves. I do not really like thinking about outside events and outside things to be kind of like the reason why something is happening. It might be a catalyst, but um, often it is just in ourselves anyway, so it's been before in ourselves, and so therefore it's, uh, it's difficult to say. You know, it's difficult to say whether it's been, or it is you yourself, or other people who are actually the reason why something happened. Anyway, um, dealing with it, seeing a therapist, period. Um, I, I or just doing some research, but I am by no means in, in a position to uh, give advice on such fucked up shit. Learning from kids. I don't have kids, but I babysit a lovely 70 year old girl, the biggest sweetheart I've had the pleasure of looking after. Yesterday we were at the park. She uh, absolutely lost dogs, so she waltzed up confidently to a large German shepherd. Once she got close, however, the dog immediately tried to attack her and was inches away from hurting her badly before the owner got control again. The owners rushed over to see if she was okay, apologizing, ask, asking if she was okay repeatedly. I looked over to her, expecting tears, but instead found her off looking for something else to play with on the playground. She was completely unfazed. I asked if she wanted to have a seat and process that event together, thinking it could be and so on and so forth. I, I'm actually interested in the whole story, so I might read the whole thing when it loads, of course. For whatever reason, Reddit is having a few issues. Maybe it's just me, my computer, my, my interwebs, I don't know, to load things. Um, this post was deleted by the... <laughs> well, Uh, that's interesting. Um, it really is. <laughs> now it's gone. But what should I say about it? Well, I don't know if this kid is indeed unfazed. I would argue that very often it's just us trying to, to, to save ourselves mentally that we just get rid of certain events that happened. You know, we just forget about them. They kind of 
that, that that's just a blank page in the story of our lives sometimes and it is for our own safety at least it's the conscious mind i'd say i don't really think that our subconscious forgets and this would actually be kind of interesting to know does our subconscious ever forget would actually really be interesting can our subconscious mind forget does your subconscious mind forget um does the subconscious mind remember everything might actually be a better way of phrasing it i don't really know couldn't really say um but let's have a look once it loaded I often hear that we only use 10% of our brain's power, but this can't be true because why would we have such powerful minds in the first place? We are designed to be imaginative and develop to bigger and better things. The human mind is the most complex and incomprehensible structure ever created in the entire universe. Don't let your mindset limit your ambition and result. Learn how to use its immense potential for incredible success. Our subconscious mind has the ability and capability to hold and remember every bit of information it has received in a lifetime. The reason your subconscious mind can process 1 trillion megabyte of information per second and has a memory volume of 1 million gigabyte, which is 1 million, isn't it 100,000 terabyte then? It's just my, well, I... I I want to know. I want to know. I'm having one and one, two, three, four, five, six. Then it leaves me with a, a thousand terabyte. Could this be the case? Am I dumb? When I'm getting rid of, yeah, it should be a thousand gigabytes, uh, terabytes, which is something. It's not that much um, but I would also say that the images that we're having in our mind are not full images um, thinking of the quality of our eyes images I guess that it is only fractional uh, implying your subconscious mind has a memory capacity that could be could be limitless how your subconscious mind remembers the human mind has to be the most complex structure I could actually do this um, and I could actually also try to do it like this so that it is always above me. The human mind has to be the most complex structure in the entire universe and scientists contribute their lives working to uncover its secret but we never seem to get a straightforward answer to some of the most frequent questions. How much information can your subconscious mind process? How? What's your brain made of? from can you use 100% of your brain simple ways to increase your subconscious capacity exercise your imagination is connect to feelings and emotions uh, is this even does this remember everything how much information let's actually maybe have a look at this to make this easier to understand, if it was a computer, what are your mental capacities? The average brain has about 100 billion neurons and each one connects to 10 billion other neurons resulting in 10,000 synapses per cell. Synapses pass the electrical signal around the brain which tells your body when to do something. It might help to think of each synapse link one data point. Uh, every data point is either one or zero and in total that is about one quadrillion ones and zeros. Your brain works as fast as a computer that processes one trillion megabytes per second. Our subconscious mind is responsible for 95% of our brain activity, meaning we are not consciously aware of the real power. What arguments can you use? Uh, blah blah blah. The argument that we can only use 10% of our brain power is nonsense and it has been proven by scientists numerous times. What we don't know is exactly how much we use, but research shows we never use 100% at once. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think when you do not need a certain area for whatever reason, I don't know the connections, uh, what things are for, and, and stuff like that, 
but it would not make any sense since it is so calorie or would be so calorie inefficient to, to do so. In this situation, if we were to use all our brain's process at once, it would lead to overload and the system would crash. Our mind, like our computer, controls a lot of programs in the background. These programs keep us alive and we never want to turn these programs off. The brain is divided into sections and blah, 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 blah. This does not actually give me an answer to the question that I've had. But kind of... Uh A 2021 article by the Elena Voice Lab. If this is trusted, I don't know. The subconscious mind is a powerful secondary system that runs everything and blah, 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 blah. Uh, from eating and breathing and so on and so forth. A lot of things that it does. Can people use 100% of their brains data storage of subconscious mind to make this easier to understand if it was a computer with mental capacity average system? This is the exact same text that I've read before as well. Um, great, can the subconscious mind forget? The answer is no. Your subconscious mind will not forget anything. It is alert every time. Actually, it is capable of storing information from the time you were born and arguably of your past lives also. Memory is cited within the subconscious which consists of two basic functions. Firstly, the interrangement of perceived facts within the brain, like books filled in the library. Secondly, recall as in locating the perceived fact as the correct passage within the correct book. So in this respect, the memory still exists, even if you cannot recall that memory. Memory in your conscious mind is short term and limited. Tests show that most people cannot remember more than seven digits at one time. Uh, conversely, the memory in your subconscious mind is virtually unlimited. Every sight, sound, touch, smell and emotion that you have experienced from birth and even before birth to the present is in your memory. If you cannot remember some fact, do not blame your memory because that fact is there. Blame your recall. If you want to upgrade your subconscious memory capacity and read my next post here and download res well, okay, cool. Um, by Alan Trang has got a few years working as a freelance writer with enthusiasm to improve and yada yada yada. With that being said, I'm probably going to end the episode there, so I wish you the best, see you soon, and 